Hello everyone, welcome to Bayern Now, the ultimate Bayern Munich fan channel. Contrary to popular belief, Vincent Company isn't just doing black magic to win all these games by these abusive score lines. I don't actually think that's popular belief, but you know, just go with me for the video. <laughs> there are tactics at work. So we're going to talk about those tactics because I'm really, really interested in what Company is doing at Bayern so far. I set up the teams to represent Werder Bremen versus Bayern, the game yesterday. Now, ignore some of the names on here. I just tried to make it easy for me to pronounce. The ones I couldn't pronounce, I just, you know, <laughs> I just changed. I think the, the dude right here, his name was like Duckenstein. I'm never going to pronounce that. It's probably not even Duckenstein. It's probably something else, but I'm going to call him Duck. This other dude had a different name. I'm just going to call him Growl. Let's go. Every team starts with a plan in build-up. So when you have the ball in your own half, how do you get it out? How do you move it to the next phase of play, which is into the midfield and into your attack? That's something company solved very quickly. So there's different phases. Let's say the ball is coming from our goalkeeper, Ulreich. Our center backs, Asian guy and black guy, you know who I'm talking about, are usually split very wide. This is the most telling difference between Tuchel ball and company ball. Tuchel center backs were just everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Company is deliberately placing his center backs very far from each other to stretch the field. His center backs basically turn into his fullbacks, which is a really interesting concept. Now, I'm not going to place the opponent in their position. I'll do that after I set up Byron's style. But now there's a big gap, you can tell, between the goalkeeper and the center backs, which is why as soon as the goalkeeper is about to play the ball, there is an intention from one of the midfielders, usually Kimmich, to drop into the middle right here. The goal, well, because the, full, the center backs that look like full backs are so far apart, you need someone who can connect. Also, what if you lose the ball? Now there's a huge gap in the center. Imagine if Kimmich just wasn't there. You see the gap? So Kimmich drops, and it creates a three. And then you're probably thinking, well, Muziala probably drops and creates the midfield duo. And no, actually, company's doing something different. Both Davies and our right back, so our fullbacks, are inverting. This is just the game yesterday. I don't know if we did this in any other games. I'll be honest. Yesterday was the only game I decided to really think about the tactics we were playing. The other games, I've just been like sucked in and into, the, into the entertainment. I didn't really think about the tactical side of the game, which is good. That's how I want to watch the games. Now I'm really interested in the team. I'm like invested. I'm trying my hardest to consume more Bayern. Whereas when Tuchel was here, I was just so annoyed with this team. I didn't care that much to watch every angle, to think of it tactically, you know. I did think of Tuchel's teams tactically. He just thought he was a loser, horrible coach. Anyways, I digress. So now you see what I'm talking about. But because the fullbacks invert, what does that mean? Our wingers are very wide. They're touchline wingers now. This means the field is stretched to the maximum, and with your fullbacks inverted, you're creating a, a midfield three out of nothing, just a midfield three. And then you have your striker, Kane, and sometimes it's almost like a front two with Muziala joining up. This is why we saw Muziala the other day. I think he received the ball, and he used this chest. Or was it his head? And he just put someone on, I think it was, it was Elise, and then they scored. This is why we're seeing those things. Because Muziala has been given an insane amount of freedom to kind of move around. Now, 
let's of course show you how the opponent would press. I forgot how Wolfsburg or uh, Werder Bremen pressed us, but I know their fullbacks were on Olise at all times, and their strikers weren't necessarily pressing us to the very end, but they were tight. And one of them would make sure Kimmich just didn't get enough freedom. And then it kind of looked like this. I, I forgot exactly who's where at what times, but it looked like this. So let's say we played the ball to Upa. You know, sometimes it felt so weird because I was like, where's the fullback? Who's the passing option? But it would be the winger here. The winger would drop. And then Limer would come out a little bit. Or sometimes Limer would go back to his original position out wide if the situation required it. And then it would be Muziala who drops into the midfield. And Olise who kind of takes up that Muziala position next to Kane. This was actually Kingsley Coman. I don't know what I did here. Yeah. So you can see it's fluid, right? But this is how it looked most of the times, right? So Kimmich... Would I need a draw? Yeah, this is good. Ball here, and Limer's in, and maybe Limer was higher, so Pavlovich kind of takes over and creates this weird, you know, triangle. And it, it, the goal was just drag the opponent out of their positions. Ah, oh, man. I really got to delete all of these manual. I got to stop drawing arrows. It's hard to like delete them quick. So, you know, they, they're there. But Pavlovich had a very important role. By the way, it wasn't just Kimmich dropping here. Sometimes Pavlovich would drop here. Now, let's move on to what we look like in attack. Because that's where we're really devastating, I feel. How we looked in attack is pretty similar to how we play. It's... Very, very similar. Oh, see, this is the problem. You got to, like, manually move these guys all the way back. Because we did have them pinned back. Yeah, let's do this. See, now our center backs would still look like fullbacks. Kimmich would be playing in between them. But now, the structure was a lot clearer. Sometimes, Kimmich would be out on the right, just like this. It wasn't restrictive. But... Of course, in the first phase of build-up. Because this is how it would work, right? It, you would start with the center backs wide. And, you know, Kimmich would go here. And as the ball progressed, naturally, Kimmich would come up like a midfielder. And because the center backs pressed, sometimes, you know, Upa would just come in depending on the direction of the ball. And it would look like this. So it wasn't like Kimmich was always just in the middle. Sometimes it wouldn't be Kimmich. It would be Pavlovich. Right, maybe maybe Pavlovich goes here, and because Pavlovich dropped from there to there, Kimmich would kind of replace him, and it'd be like a staggered position. Maybe Limer, and then Upa has to spread again. Like so, it was very fluid. But for the most part, I remember in the second phase, Kimmich being in that inverted right back position, right, and Limer playing like this, and Limer was encouraged to make these runs, right. Maybe Kane would be here and Muziala just operating with freedom in this in this giant pocket of space right there, right? He would just operate. And maybe sometimes Muziala would come in here and get the ball to Davies, who was encouraged to run in the half spaces. So as opposed to overlapping fullbacks, we have underlapping fullbacks, which is a concept developed when the fullback runs inside, right, as opposed to on the outside. This is a very crucial concept because we're going to be creating a lot of chances through um, cutbacks as opposed to, you know, crossing. This is not really something that's part of the plan. We're going to cross, but we're just going to be creating a majority of our chances through cutbacks. So, you know, let's say Kane would operate here. This is why Kane is involved in the buildup more than ever because sometimes because of so many midfielders being around here, right? You kind of need someone behind this pocket. So Kane has to drop. And this means Muziala is holding a really high position. Or it's the other way around where Muziala is kind of hovering in this pocket. And the goal is to just create, 
you know, at least some sort of a neutrality or superiority in the numbers around here. Now, the problem is for the opponent, sometimes it'd be like this, right? But for the most part, our wingers stay wide and not until they receive the ball or the ball gets to their area that they are, you know, making interchanging runs. Maybe Limer runs in here and then Olise runs here, Muziala runs there. And you see this, maybe Olise gets the ball, slips Muziala through, and then Kane just comes out of nowhere, or Kingsley Coman on the far post. This is company ball 101, I feel. It's just half space manipulation. It's similar to what Man City do. Some of the key players in the system include Pavlovic, Kimmich. Now, when we when we do have someone like Let's put number 16 here, like Paulinha. Oh, what am I doing? I'm out here drawing balls. So when we have someone like Paulinha, let's say for Pavlovic, he's a lot less mobile on, on the ball. So what he wants to do is just kind of shield, right? Shield the players. So he kind of just screens the back four. So if the press is coming this way, he's coming with the press. He's not trying to receive the ball, but he's cr like trying to create angles for p passing lanes. Maybe Kane drops or Muzial is here. So that's a little bit of a different dynamic. But then that would mean Kimmich has more responsibility to move around and try to collect the ball and pass it. I think we'll end the video here. You guys kind of understand what company is attempting to accomplish. Now, oh. Our press, what, how could I forget? That's my favorite part about all of this, right? It's the press, at least the one we, we implemented yesterday. So let's say they're building up out of the back here. Let's just do all of this, right? Let's say they're, you know, trying to build up out of the back. Of course, their strikers are going to be very close. Their wing backs are kind of going to be like wingers in a way. Um, and then let's set the midfield by the way we go back to a midfield too let's remove paulina for now we don't need him and then you have the asian guy and the black guy and so this is the point oh, dang there's too many players man jeez okay where, where's where's kane right here kane okay so when we're pressing okay are we good finally i think we have everyone ever by the way i just put pavlovich uh i just Gave him the nine, the number eight, because in my heart, that's what he is. So let's say they're building up out of the back. This is something really surprising to me. I didn't really understand their build-up structure. I think one of their center backs kind of joined into the midfield, and they're like they tried to like really open up this passing lane because one of the center backs would join. So their goal was to get the ball to the two outside midfielders, while one of the center backs kind of you know just came up here kind of like this right this is kind of like what they tried to accomplish in their build-up their wingers uh, wing backs would drop depending on which side the ball was on let's delete that ball now this is what i thought was really interesting let's say the goalkeeper got the ball clearly company figured that they were better on build-up on one side than the other side i don't know if it was young or stark or whichever center back would usually be here they were clearly more comfortable on their right-hand side, which is our left-hand side. So what would happen is Kane and Muziala would kind of try to focus on cutting the angles on, on these two players, right, one of the center backs. It, it, it doesn't look straightforward because it's not supposed to. But the goal was if we cut off the passing lanes, right, into the center, we can force them – into rushing passes out wide. But what I thought was interesting was how weird Olise, not weird, good, right? It's a good thing. Olise would start his press like here, like very like far forward. And instead of pressing here, he would go like at an angle. And the goal was to block the passing lane to Young or whoever this would have been. And then force the goalkeeper to pass to whoever this is but then by the time he got the ball, Coman was rushing in, right? And then their goal, remember, is to get the ball here. But then Pavlovich would have been here and Davies would have been here. 
Now, we're not pressing like with no triggers. What it seems like is the first trigger is if the goalkeeper is about to get the ball to their right-handed center back, Olise would cut off the pass to the left side center back. And then we would get the ball kind of forced, like make it an obvious pass to their right center back who then turns and Kingsley is then running because he received the ball. And then when the fullback's running, Davies is following the fullback. And then when they think they can get it to this guy, Pavlovich and or Kimmich is following and if they go long, Upa Meccano and Kim are so freaking close. Like, it's a very dangerous man-to-man. Because if they were able to rotate possession to, like, the other side very quickly, like, let's say they just said, all right, forget about this side. If they had a really good goalkeeper, like, let's say, you know, the center back first times it to the goalkeeper and he just lobs it right here, then we would have a problem. But what we're hoping to do is suffocate the opponent in their own half or in a specific area so they don't have like free reign to kind of play however they want. I'm a fan of this. I love it. The it comes with its, you know, risk, of course. But the reward is let's say they do try to force the ball into this player. You'll see, like let's say they try to force the ball to to like starge here. Kimmich will be around him. Kane is right there. Because of the proximity we create on that one side and just push everyone forward, like where the ball is, both our midfielders are kind of close. Unless this guy's Tiago Alcantara, which I doubt, he's never going to be able to just calmly turn. So sometimes he'll pass the ball and then Davies just sticks his foot out. It goes to Coman, goes to Kane, and then Elise has a tap in. This is a very crucial part of company's plan and I think it's working it's working so far in the bigger games I'm curious is he gonna be more pragmatic something tells me not because he has an ego by the way there was a video that came out of company shouting at his players and people were like oh he has an ego company cares about one person and it's company do you actually think all of these top managers don't have egos of some sort for you to just decide to tell grown men what to do for 90 minutes straight and every week in training, you must have a belief in yourself. Company clearly believes his ideas are good and they must be executed perfectly. Pep Guardiola is a freak. Mourinho is a freak. These guys don't, they're almost emotionless about their job. To them, it's, I'm your boss. I tell you what to do. You have to listen. And when we lose, I take responsibility. Some managers throw their team under the bus. Thomas Tuchel. Some managers take responsibility, and that's the trade-off. I take responsibility for all our failures so long as I get to implement my system. So, and then another thing, Burnley was going to get relegated, and company made a really good point. A lot of people were going to lose their jobs. When you get relegated, you don't just keep everything the same. No, you got to fire extra people because when you're in the top flight, you have a little bit more money to invest in the local economy, hire a hundred more people or so. But when you get relegated, you're losing a lot of money. So you don't have the money to spend on those people's jobs. So as a coach, you feel the responsibility of not just the players, but the food that goes on the table of your staff. You're going to cut down your staff if you get relegated. So there's a certain degree of anger that could come if players aren't doing what they're supposed to do. The team isn't just all the 22 people in the squad. It's the physios. It's the medical team. The people who rely on the club and its success for their family's ability to eat food. So I think, if anything, it proves that company understands that it's not just about him. It's about others. Because maybe company always thought, I'm not going to be at Burnley forever. I'm going to leave at some point. So... I just watched Leverkusen play. It's going to be a really interesting game next week. The tactical battle is going to be bizarre because Leverkusen are possession obsessed and so are we. And they press high and so do we. It's going to be very weird. I have a strange feeling. Like, guys, even if we lose that game, which could happen, 
it's not the end of the world. And the reason I think we could lose the game is because we are open. I mean, if a team bypasses our press, because we're not starting Paulinha, there's no one to protect the back four. I think Upa Meccano and Kim are thriving in in company system and will thrive for more games than they did last season because they're playing with their strengths. These defenders are not Virgil van Dijk where they can hold their composure in a 3v1 situation. They're more erotic, you know. Upa wants to win it and start a counterattack. And so by pressing high as a team, it kind of fits into his mold of football. It's going to be good. Now, I hope Neuer's fit because Ureich is not going to do it, especially if the ball gets hit over the top. And Leverkusen have very good passing sequences. We're going to have to deal with that. So we need a sweeper keeper who's alert. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Mia sent me in 20 minutes. Jeez.